to St. John. How's everybody this morning? Everybody good? Be beautiful day as we uh, celebrate uh, the gift of faith here at St. John. Uh, I want to welcome everybody on Zoom, Facebook Live, and of course here in the sanctuary. And we become one community that uh, worships together, which is a good thing. For those here, uh, physically here in the church, you might notice a fresh smell. The carpets were all clean, uh, which was nice in the last few days, which was a good thing. We had a wonderful uh, Hearts, Hands, and Music uh, summer camp this past week. Uh, I'm not sure how many children actually participated. 45, 45 kids uh, participated and uh, 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 learning how to celebrate God and, and worship in, in, some, in new ways. It was very, very good, well attended, and we're excited about that. Uh, this week coming up, we do have, uh, on Monday, we have a worship meeting at 4 o'clock. And if you are interested in being part of the worship committee and you've not been a part of it before, feel free to show up at 4 o'clock and we'll have a meeting in the conference room. Uh, Bad Pastor, we do have uh, Tuesday this week. It's not, in the, it's not in the calendar because I didn't tell someone. Uh, Pathways, Pathways and Compassion is at 10 o'clock. We have a meeting, is that correct, Marsha? I'm saying that right. I just didn't tell Marie, which is on me. Uh, and anyway, we have a 10 o'clock meeting for Pathways and Compassion. That's our nursing home visitation ministry that is grooved mostly to working with people who have no visitors, and uh, that ministry is going along. If you're interested in learning more about Pathways and how you can be a part of that team, uh, feel free to show up as well. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we'll be in the conference room, and we not tomorrow, of course, that's Tuesday. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm kind of... See, this is why, and we're going to talk more about this in the sermon, about being a team. We help each other out. And how maybe I'm too much like Peter sometimes, jumping out of the boat. But thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, everything else, I think pretty much is the same. There will be, this coming Sunday, uh, an orientation for the tutoring program. And, uh, and that will start at 11.15. Uh, Am I good? We've got 24 volunteers, by the way, for the tutoring program. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Did I do pastor's math on you? You said 19 and I said 24. That's okay. A lot of people are being part of the tutoring program, which is great. That's awesome. I don't think I have anything else to report. Everything else is clearly in the, in the book here. Are there, is there something I've missed or need to clarify? Uh, anything at all? If not, we will move forward. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promises are sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. Righteous God, we confess the 
slides are off. Okay. All right, where are we? We confess that we, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Please stand if you are able as we sing the gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us, and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty normal thing for us to get afraid. I have been afraid of many times in my life, and in various different ways. Um, when I was really little, maybe your age, maybe even a little bit older than you, I was really, really, really scared of E.T. Do you know who E.T. is? Okay. I thought you might not. Um, E.T. was a character in a movie, and he came from a different planet. And he was a nice guy. And people liked him, but I was afraid of him. Very, very, very afraid. But sometimes we have things that help us not feel afraid, right? Do you have anything that helps you not feel afraid? You take deep breaths. You know, you guys are always like a few steps ahead of me. I'm very impressed. Well, I'm gonna back up and tell you about this guy. Yes, this is my octopus friend. I made this octopus uh, with my grandma's help when I was in fourth grade. An octopus has been with me ever since. And sometimes when I'm scared, octopus is there to uh, 
hug me or I hug it and look at all the arms it has to hug you with. It's very nice. Yes, you see, I like them. The octopus are a big, uh, I'm a big fan of octopus. So I have this and I remember when I was little, um, my parents went on a trip and I stayed with my grandparents and octopus came with me to keep me safe. So, so octopus here. Not necessarily made to sit up. <laughs> well, today we hear some stories about some people who were scared. And one of them is a guy named Elijah. And he went up and onto a mountain to hide because he was scared. And then there was some big winds and he was looking for God in the winds and didn't find God. And then there was an earthquake and he was looking for God in the earthquake and didn't see that. And some people see God in earthquakes. And then there was a fire. Still, he didn't see God in the fire. Do you know where he saw God? In silence. And there's another story about people, Jesus' friends on a boat and there's a storm. And Jesus comes and the storm calms down and it gets nice and peaceful, kind of like silence. Do you know what this got me thinking about? A song. A song, hmm, in a way. Well, what I was thinking is the winds aren't always there, neither are earthquakes, and neither is fire, and you know, I sometimes see God in laughter of my friends, but that's not always there. But you know what's always there? Silence. Everything we do is on top of it, all these noises, but we can find ways to get back to it. And what was that thing you do when you're scared? Calm you calm down. You go for that silence. And we could learn a thing or two from you, couldn't we? So, let's have a little prayer. How's that? Okay, we're gonna be really quiet. God, thank you for always being there for, you, for us. Help us when things are big and scary to find you in the silence that's always there and find comfort in your love. Amen. First Kings, at Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness, 
wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram, and you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsively. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Second reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain to be by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. Uh, it is I. Be not afraid. Now Peter answered Jesus and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you out on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. 
But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You have little faith. Why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So, uh, why did Peter jump out of that boat? Faith is, uh, it's a tricky thing. I mean, by now, Jesus, or Peter has fully realized the power of Jesus and his ministry. Certainly a day or two before, we read last week that Jesus and the disciples fed over 5,000 people, uh, were ministering to people in a mighty way, uh, as they were both, of course, Jesus particularly was trying to process the death of his dear friend John. But all this ministry is going down. All this energy is going down. And there was enough in Peter's life by now to truly trust Jesus in uh, every way. Peter was taught to uh, love the neighbor as, as his, his, himself, to love the Lord your God, to love the neighbors yourself, to love your fellow disciples, to become a new type of a body of Christ, to be, in fact, part of a team, that as a team we can move forward in faith and do many great things. As a team, to be together as different as we might be. Well, Peter, he's a strong personality. He just is, and he's maybe a bit of an entrepreneur by nature, it's hard for him to root into a team. He struggles to do it, he wants to, but he's just, he's, he's strong, bullheaded. Bullheaded, Peter is. Now, the storm. Did it frighten him and the disciples? Probably not the storm. And we see it's more about this ghost. The storm. These are fishermen who fished on the Sea of Galilee their whole life. Storms come and go all the time. The Sea of Galilee is very low. It lays low in a valley, a valley all the way around it. And wind gets kicked up and the storms come and go. And these guys have lived through that many, many times. But of course, it wasn't the storm that frightened the disciples. It was the fact they saw some but he walking to them on the water who appeared to be a ghost. And that was pretty scary. That was pretty scary. Of course, it turns out to be Jesus. And once we understand it's Jesus, once Peter understands, once everybody in the boat understands it's Jesus, Peter, as Peter will do, he wants to get out there and walk on the water, too. He wants to walk out and greet Jesus. And so Jesus um, says, okay, come, walk. Well, the thing about Peter is that he, he is a strong personality, and it's almost like this isn't the right word, but it's almost like he wants to compete with Jesus. It's not true competition, but he wants to prove himself to Jesus all the time. He wants to go this extra mile beyond the miles Jesus himself has traveled. There's this, I want to, I want to, I want to show you, coach, how good I can be, and I've learned from you, and I can do these things. And this is Peter. It's his personality, and Jesus is working with him because he does believe Peter has the ability to ultimately lead this ministry. You remember uh, the story of Peter refusing to have his feet washed by Jesus? Everybody else had no problem. Peter said, you won't wash my feet, Lord. And of course, finally he does. He just resists. How could you, my Lord, wash my feet? He struggled to believe 
Peter did, that Jesus would have to die a painful death, that he would have to be martyred for this faith. He just wouldn't accept it. No way are you to die, Lord. And of course, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, Peter. It is part of what we do. When Jesus was arrested, and, and God bless Peter, he was the only one who, who, who followed Jesus all the way to the courtyard when he's meeting with the temple leadership, but God bless him, he, he, he's, he's bullheaded, he's going to do that, but of course when he's confronted, ultimately, he denies Jesus three times. When, Jesus, when Peter finally dies, he's crucified. But he's not crucified right side up. He has to be crucified right, uh, upside down because he's not worthy to be crucified the way his Lord was. This is Peter. And Peter is a guy whose eyes are bigger than his stomach. We know people like maybe we're that way too, but that's what Peter is. A powerful, powerful guy, filled with life, filled with hope, filled with passion for ministry, who struggles to ultimately be a part of a team. So stimulated that he leaves the disciples in a boat. He leaves them to walk to Jesus. The winds kick up, Peter gets afraid, he starts to sink, Jesus rescues him. And uh, ultimately, they get into the boat. Jesus and Peter and all of the disciples get into a boat and everything calms down. The team is together. The various gifts and talents that Jesus has assembled in this crew are now together in this boat. And things finally settle down. What about the others in the boat? Were they afraid? Afraid of a ghost? Probably that's about it. Did it have anything to do with their faith? Was this a matter of faith? Probably faith that they stayed in the boat, waiting for Jesus to come and bring them all together again. We don't know that much about it, but we do have the sense of Peter and his relationship with Jesus. In the, any event, the good news is this, that when everybody was assembled in that boat, all the guys, and ga well, guys probably in this case, were assembled to be together, to be united, to be connected, to think about everything that has been done and to go to the next destination, there was a type of peace. And the great news is that Jesus was there for them and he is there for us. He's always there, he's always here. And really good news is this. By the time Jesus dies and he uh, is resurrected and ascended, by this time Peter has been fully prepared to take on the role of leadership and to do amazing things in ministry during a very challenging time. He was prepared. Jesus stuck with him and worked with him. And it came together. Now for us at St. John, we are a type of a boat too, I suppose. Uh, and when we're together, we're at our best. When we as a ministry work together to find new ways to be God's hands and feet, we become Team Jesus. And when we become Team Jesus, even though we have different roles to play, 
we are at our best when we celebrate the work of different people in the church doing different things, when we pick up the slack when it's needed, when we have a can-do attitude, a will-do attitude, we are amazing. We are a community where we can worship, we can play, we can reflect, we can work, we can choose the way we will spend the rest of our days here on planet Earth, in part by being a part of this community. It's a community, to be sure, where we can dream big dreams, big dreams, big, bold dreams, and trust that much can get done. Just recently, we're t launching a new ministry that comes out of Antioch, the tutoring ministry, right now with 19 volunteers who are ready to serve children. It's a community that is launching a new ministry. It's a community that includes a team of volunteers who have been working tire tirelessly for several months to convert our parish house into a residence for adults with disabilities that will be fully operational by October. It's a community that works with the homeschool group here, Renaissance Homeschool, to work with them to provide the space and to do the things necessary for Renaissance to provide a value-centered education in this space four days a week. It's a community that just two years ago created a worship spiritual center for an Asian Indian Christian community who worships here every Sunday at noon. And we have done a lot of other mutual ministries together. It's a community that continues to support Many, many children exploring the ways to communicate their faith through hearts, hands, and voices. That poster over there that I'm pointing to is uh, uh, some work that the kids did this past week. It's a community, we are a community, that continues to sponsor over the years and support the work of Lutheran World Relief and we support the work of many other agencies as well. So, this is only part of our collective story. There's more to the collective story. I could talk about God's garden. I could talk about the prayer shawl ministry. I could talk about a new Eucharistic ministry that we've just launched. I could keep going, but the point is, when we are together in that boat, and we start to take stock of all the things that are being done in the name of Jesus, preparing and helping the world, it's pretty amazing. But you see, this is just the beginning of the story. When I look at you and others that can't be here today, and I know what's going on in your private lives and how you are serving others, how you are being God's hands and feet to others, whether it be your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, or other volunteer activities that make a difference in the world, when we start putting all of this together, it's pretty amazing. But we can't do it without each other. Peter proves to us that no man is an island. We can sink or we can swim, but thankfully Jesus is our lifeguard. And we, the good news for us at St. John is that we are becoming the good news. I invite you to continue to look, to dream, to believe that through Jesus you can do mighty, mighty, mighty things. To not be limited by the past. 
to recognize this is your day, this is your time, this is your generation's opportunity to pass that mantle to the next and to burn brighter and brighter every day. Amen. stand as you're able as we recite the new creed we are not alone we live in God's world we believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus the word made flesh to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit we trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be uh, seated. This is now a time in our service where we share uh, God's... Oh, there's Ashley. Thank you, thank you. Where we share uh, prayer requests and or praises with the congregation. If one, I have someone here. Okay. A little late, but um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we took a hellacious storm in Redford, and there are praises that are going out to the DTE crews that have been working for weeks now to get all the power, all the trees cut. Um, they'll still be working in our, our neighborhood to get all the trees cut, but to those people who stepped up, both here, Cross Point, and right now, in the northern part of Oakland County um, with the tornadoes that we took Friday. So um, lots of thanks go out to the people who will step up in the aftermath of a storm. Thanks. All right. Prayers and praises. Thank you. 
Uh, I would just ask for extra praises or prayers for Hawaii and everyone suffering on Maui at this time. Other prayers or praises over there? Yeah, I'm doing time territory management. I'm, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. We want to give praise for all of your praise that you've had for George. Uh, he broke his hip over a month ago, and so we are now back home, and we just really are enjoying being able to be here in the, in the presence of the Lord. All glory, splendor, adoration, thanks, and praises to Almighty God for one of his children given to me in Leicester, England, climbed a new ladder yesterday. So also one of my family in Nigeria climbed another ladder too also. Then two of my family members here in Michigan too, they all climbed new ladder, gaining new year yesterday. And also I praise God for my family that came from Marsfield, England, two weeks ago. They were here with the grace of God, with protection, his kindness on them, and they went back last week, Tuesday. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Any other prayers or praises? I want to thank the uh, members of the congregation for sharing your space with our track team. Last week was Junior Olympics. We had two athletes who were triple All-Americans. Um, Zoe got third place in pentathlon, which was a tremendous accomplishment. She's 12. And Tegan, who's uh, 16, coming back from a shoulder injury, uh, medaled in three throwing events. Um, just tremendous. So a lot of help. Um, and each of them learned to do what they do here in this space. So thank you. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, pray for the family of uh, Marv Whitkoff. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the, those in need, and all creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O God. God of sea and sky, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains proclaim your glory. Prosper the work of ecologists as they teach us new ways to care for the environment. Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters, especially Hawaii. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. Instill in local, regional, national, and global political and civic leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O oh God. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. 
God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation, and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service, especially nursing pioneers Florence Nightingale and Clara Mass, whom the church remembers today. As examples of following your call, hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we command all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Everyone. stand as you're able. God, of the forest, sea, and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through Jesus Christ our Savior, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
was betrayed, he took his disciples in an upper room to say goodbye and had a meal with them. And at the beginning of the meal, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to each of his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And after the meal was completed, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are strengthened to become his hands and feet for a world that desperately needs this love. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. This is an open table for all. Come and eat what is good. You may be seated. And to our friends on Facebook Live and Zoom, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.